Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Plants. Today I want to share with you my absolutely beautiful Mona Lisa lipstick plant. This is also known as the Aeschgenanthus radicans. It was recently featured in one of my houseplant tour videos and it wasn't fully in bloom yet, but it is now. So I wanted to share that with you folks today, as well as provide some care tips and how to propagate this absolutely stunning plant. I'll talk a bit more about the flowers here in a second, but it gets the name, obviously the lipstick plant, as the flowers kind of resemble a little tube of lipstick before they completely open into a flower form uh, like these guys up here. It's a little hard to tell, um, but they are, uh, they're such a cool flower. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about with this plant is watering. It can be a little finicky, I guess, not quite in the like Calathea territory, but this plant does not like to dry out completely, but also it doesn't like to sit in really wet soil for very long. So kind of that in between, uh, maybe just let it dry out on the top a little bit, but uh, make sure you give it a good thorough watering and that it doesn't sit in damp soil for very long. So with this one being such a full pot as it is, I use these little um, bamboo skewers and, uh, or you can use like a moisture meter, but I will find a couple areas in the pot and then stick it right in the soil all the way to the bottom. Uh, let it sit there for a minute. I'm not even getting it on camera here. Just pan up here a little bit, sorry about that. Um, I'll let it sit here for a minute and then pull it out. And if you have any soil sticking to the skewer itself, then you know that uh, the soil is more on the damp side. That one didn't really work out very well. This pot isn't very deep. Try another spot here. There, now it went all the way down. Let it sit there for a minute and then pull it out. So you can see from about this portion all the way down, it is fairly damp. So the pot is only about maybe maybe this deep. So half of the soil is a little bit on the damp and wet side. So right now I'm not gonna give it any water as uh, again, if you overwater it, you're gonna basically rot the roots and it's going to die back. So I'm gonna let this dry out for probably another week or so. And then uh, check the soil here again. So I've been troubleshooting a couple issues that I have with a few leaves on some stems here. Like this one, you can see it looks pretty wrinkled or dehydrated. I've been keeping a consistent watering routine, basically when it uh, dries out uh, on the top portion of the soil. So I'm just kind of monitoring it right now just to see if maybe I'm overwatering or underwatering and uh, I'll kind of uh, just keep an eye on the leaves. But I will be pruning some of these off. As you can see, if you go up to the next leaf, it is not dehydrated. So I don't know if this is just a reaction from the plant um, getting rid of some leaves for, for new growth, I'm not too sure, but um, there is a few areas on the lower portion of the stems that I'm kind of troubleshooting here. So now I'm gonna talk about lighting. These lipstick plants love a bright, sunny spot. If it is in the, uh, I guess, an appropriate spot, it's gonna, I guess, reward you with some flowers. So if it is not flowering, it probably needs a brighter spot. But with that said, just make sure you're not giving it um, direct sunlight as it's gonna burn the leaves. I'll show you uh, right here. These little spots, I do believe, are from too much sunlight. I'll show you that here in a second. But um, this plant is in my basement. It gets no sunlight, like nothing. So I have been supplementing it with these grow bulbs. It sits right on the shelf and obviously it is liking that spot. It's getting tons of new growth. Like these are all new leaves and uh, they're, uh, yeah, they, they come out in this almost like a darker brown kind of reddish color. And uh, yeah, they're pretty cool, but uh, it gets artificial light just from some grow bulbs. So if you wanna see what type of grow bulb I'll use, I'll uh, leave it down in the description. Um, but so far, all my plants downstairs are loving these grow bulbs. And uh, as you can see, it's obviously rewarding me with tons of flowers on this plant. So obviously I would not recommend this in a shady spot or in like a direct sunlight, maybe pulled back to the side from a south facing window or close to like an east and west facing window. I think that would be okay. So for the soil, it's really tough to see kind of through all the leaves and flowers and stuff, but I've been using a ProMix tropical soil. Oh, here it is right here. Premium tropical plant mix. And this is kind of what I've been using for all my house plants as it does have some perlite. It's a well draining soil mix. And that's what uh, this needs. I do have it in the original white plastic. I can't even, 
right down there. The white plastic hanging pot, I just took the hanging hooks off and it's been just kind of uh, seated on my shelf there. But I did replace all the soil with uh, something a little bit more of a well draining. This is a soil that I recommend. So I've been uh, kind of showcasing ProMix in some of my videos for a while. So you never know, maybe they'll see it and maybe it'll be a sponsor sometime. Anyways, um, so yeah, it is a good draining soil um, with some extra perlite in there sometimes. I don't know if I did it in this one or not. This is the fertilizer that I use for most of my house plants. It's just Miracle Grow's water soluble granular fertilizer. It's a balanced 20, 20, and 20. For the first fertilizer of the year, uh, which is probably coming up here pretty soon, I will basically cut the dose in half. So like half a scoop and then just place it in this watering can. I will wait till the plant needs a good thorough watering and then I will just kind of water it as I would normally. You don't want to water your plant and then give it some fertilizer. Otherwise you're just going to completely soak it and you're gonna end up with some root rot. If you recently repot it in some new soil, just make sure that you check uh, the packaging as sometimes these commercial uh, uh, soils will have uh, fertilizer already in the soil. So it says it feeds for up to three months. So you don't wanna give it uh, too much fertilizer so obviously just read the package, look at uh, what the ingredients are and go from there. Propagating this plant is extremely easy. I'll show you an example here in a second. Here is the end of the stem and obviously this is the portion that kind of leads up to the plant. So you want to get close to a section of leaves. This is the leaf node. Take some nice sterile uh, clean pruning shears and cut as close to that uh, leaf node as you can. Just something like that. So you can have a section that you can place in uh, some water. I'm gonna cut off these bottom leaves like that. This is the portion that you would put in water so that uh, you can get some nice water roots on there. Here's my little propagation container with some cuttings that have been in here for a few weeks now. I'm just gonna take them out just so you can see the roots grow from the bottom of the stem and they all have roots. I'm gonna be potting these up in some soil here today, I think as well. Yeah, nice roots on these, just at the bottom. One stem is actually even flowering, which is pretty cool. Lots of roots, tiny little roots, very fine. So obviously change out the water. I would do it maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks, just so it gets some fresh, uh, clean, oxygenated water. And then you should have some cuttings like this in no time. I'm gonna set these aside for right now and I'm gonna go around the plant and cut off some of the, um, kind of that wrinkly dead foliage. And uh, I'll be putting some more of these cuttings in the propagation container so I can make some more plants. So there's a few dead stems, if I can get to it. This plant is so thick. So there's no leaves on this section of the stem and it's actually turned brown from this portion uh, down. So I'm going to cut again, nice and close to the leaf node. Uh, this is where new growth will kind of pop out from. So it will start to branch. I'm trying to keep an eye out for areas where I've done it previously, just so I can show you where it branches out. Here's another section right here. It's got some dead. So I'm actually gonna cut it back to the next leaf node because this one is already kind of dying back. It's looking a little wrinkly. So cleaning out your plant of like dead and dying leaves like this will just help prevent any pests. See this one just actually just pop right out. So uh, just making sure you remove any dead foliage, dead branches will just keep your plant healthy. You can see a bit of the soil in here now. Um, it is still a bit damp, even on the top. So I'm definitely gonna let this dry out for a while uh, longer, but uh, yeah, just go through your plant every once in a while, cut off the dead and dying foliage, dead leaves, just clean it up, make sure you don't have any invitation for pests. Just gonna quickly show the placement of the plant. Everything looks super healthy, no more dead foliage on there. Now I'm going to pot up these cuttings in a small terracotta pot. Here is the ProMix Tropical Mix. Just add a little bit of extra perlite in there and I'm just going to kind of mix it up to a consistency of something like this. So these stems are quite a bit longer. I'm actually just going to cut a few of these kind of lower leaves and I'm gonna place it close to, actually I'm gonna keep those leaves up there. I'm going to put a little bit of soil in the bottom of the pot first, and then I'm actually going to uh, just keep these roots fairly low in the pot like that. Just stick the rest of the stems in there as well. Gonna kind of maybe cross them over a little bit. Don't my hands get in the video. I probably should have taken maybe some smaller cuttings, but for right now, I'm just going to plant them in the pot like this. And then I'm simply just going to add some soil around and then give it a good thorough watering. If you follow my channel, 
uh, for any length of time, you know that whenever I do a, I guess, water to soil transition or repotting, I will keep this soil relatively wet for about the first two weeks and then I'll slowly cut back on the watering. It's just really tough for those, uh, especially these ones, those very tiny roots that have been growing in water. It's tough to transition to kind of that drier soil, so you want to keep it wet and then just kind of uh, slowly cut back to like a regular watering routine for these in about two weeks. I've never tried soil propagation with these so I'm actually going to take the small cuttings that I had set aside for water and I cut off the lower leaves and I'm simply just going to stick it in the soil and uh, kind of see what happens. I've got a couple cuttings here so I'm just going to place it around the side so it, I'm thinking it should be okay because I'm going to be keeping the soil relatively damp for the first few weeks so it should be okay, like the uh, soil moisture should be okay. I'm just gonna stick them in. This one I might put right in the middle. And then I'm simply just gonna water it, set it aside in a bright sunny area, and uh, see what these uh, new fresh cuttings do as well. I'm just gonna lightly spray off the leaves here. Pickles is barking upstairs. And then I'm going to just give it some water and that will be it for this video. Just going to give it enough water so that it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. That way I know it's thoroughly watered. So I'll just let that soak through. It's already coming out the bottom. So you know that's a well-draining soil when it's already coming out the bottom. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this uh, lipstick plant care video, propagation video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Take care.